New York State has generally been praised for its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, questions remain on whether more needed to be done to protect patients in nursing homes and whether state policies made matters worse. Here's a detailed look. In a symbolic funeral for New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's leadership and integrity, organizers wheeled a coffin out in front of a Brooklyn nursing home. The coffin was filled with copies of the governor's newly released book about his COVID-19 leadership, which was written during the height of the pandemic when more than 30,000 New Yorkers died from the virus. Very personal and emotional for all of us. Grieving family members and supporters recently gathered in front of the Cobble Hill Health Center, demanding an apology from the governor on behalf of their loved ones. Many believe that lives were lost unnecessarily due to his controversial executive order to send recovering COVID-19 patients into nursing homes and subsequent unreported COVID-related deaths. New York only counts residents who died on nursing home property as nursing home deaths, not those who were transported to hospital and died there. We deserve the families in front of you, the families you represent, deserve to know the truth. And if somebody made a mistake and all that was going on, and it was a crazy time, we would forgive. The March 25th executive order was intended to free up hospital beds at the height of the pandemic. It has since drawn widespread criticism from relatives, health professionals, and patient advocates who believe it gave rise to the number of outbreaks in adult care facilities. The governor was forced to reverse the order after mounting pressure in early May. For thousands of families, the effort proved to be 46 days too late. Heidi Pabe lost her mother in April. Afterwards, after she passed away, is when I found out that the facility was taking COVID positive patients from the hospital. The advisory has since been deleted from the New York Health Department's website. Despite bipartisan outrage, New York's health department has so far declined to release its internal survey on nursing home deaths. It's estimated that 6,300 recovering coronavirus patients were sent to New York's already vulnerable adult care facilities. However, after being denied access to official data, the Associated Press launched its own investigation, which found more than 4,500 COVID patients were sent to adult care facilities from late March to early May, the same time period that the controversial directive was in place. New York has recorded over 6,600 nursing and adult care facility deaths, more than any other state in the country. However, that number is also believed to be significantly higher. Only since May, after the peak of New York's outbreak, were nursing homes required to submit weekly data on coronavirus deaths, regardless of whether residents died at the facility or in a hospital. As a result, the data doesn't cover the 46 days that the state nursing home mandate was in place. Author and television personality Janice Steen has been an outspoken voice and advocate for the thousands of families who have lost loved ones, especially in nursing homes. She lost both of her in-laws in separate elder care facilities during the COVID lockdown in late March. His dad uh, went first. Um, he was in the nursing home and we didn't know he was even ill. We were quarantined. We couldn't go visit him. We were, we were relying on the people that worked at the nursing home to give us updates on Mickey. And we got a call on a Saturday afternoon in late March that he wasn't feeling well. And three hours later, we get a phone call saying he was dead. And I do remember not long before he got sick and died, we did get a phone call from the nursing home saying that he was going to be moved to another floor to allow for more patients. Dean says that in retrospect, that was the first red flag. We didn't know he had died of COVID until we saw the death certificate. So that was another, you know, these few weeks that we were going through all of this were, you know, it was like we were living in a nightmare. Her mother-in-law fell ill at another elder care facility. She was transported to the hospital and diagnosed with COVID, where she passed away shortly after. Vivian Zayas and her sister Alexa founded Voices for Seniors after their mother died in a New York nursing home from coronavirus. They had been assured two days earlier that she was fine they're still looking for answers. My mom was Anna Martinez, and um, we're here because we loved her. We're here because we want to make sure that what happened to her doesn't happen to any other senior. But we also want accountability because she meant something to us. And although she was one of thousands, she was important enough for us to stand up and raise a voice on her behalf. 
Nearly every time the governor has been questioned about New York's nursing home death toll, he's either blamed it on nursing home staff or brushed it off as politically motivated criticism. It's all a political charade, and it's an ugly one, frankly, uh, to talk about uh, a number of deaths and suggest there was politics at it. The governor has so far refused to conduct an independent bipartisan investigation. However, members of his own party have vowed to move forward. I'll stand with you to get it. Um, because it'll be more genuine to say, I'm sorry for your loss when we make sure that investigation has happened and truth is told. Susan Tehrani from New York for We On, World is One.